Hi, welcome to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters. And I'm Judy Nathans, and I hope not to have a coughing spell, but if you're prepared, you'll know <laughs> right. when I have a cough it's, drop. So it was very exciting last funny. week. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. yeah he thought nice. I was dying, but he, the show had to go on. That's right. <laughs> yeah, break a leg. Yeah, so today's so, uh, uh, May 31st, 2016. Yeah, last day of May. That's that's true. And there's no primaries. Uh, no primary. You know, I was actually kind of spoofed that way. I was thinking, mm. oh yeah, yeah, the late, the California primary is coming up this coming Tuesday, and then I said, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Actually, it's another week, right? Yeah, I thought it was Puerto Rico today, but no. I looked on the calendar. There's nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing, right? But next week. That's the big seven. one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we. We'll, That'll be it. Yeah. That'll determine. Hopefully. No, it's already settled. Yeah, you know. What I mean. <laughs> Mathematically, fight, fight, fight. mathematically, it will mathematically, be determined it's by pledge delegates, not super delegates. Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so this is one of those uh, kind of convenient weeks because we had a holiday, right. a Memorial Day, and sadly, the the Memorial Day yeah. uh, uh, commemoration events and the parade, which I was actually planning to go to. Yeah. I thought they at least have the cemetery thing, but they didn't. Um, yeah, it got canceled. Yeah. Somebody, I, I, maybe it was a Facebook post, somewhere <coughs> pointed out something. Uh, kind of a sad note, but I think it was actually pretty accurate, mm -hmm. which is that the you know the the people the generation they call the greatest generation really is dying out. Oh, there's only they're, a few left. They're very they're few left. Their, they're in their nineties. Uh, yeah, and and for yeah. the longest, certainly in my lifetime, right. The 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 core of a lot of Memorial Day events were really still focused on World War II and World War II yeah. veterans. But yeah, because you know, my dad would have been ninety six, and he was actually at the end because he was in Japan. So think about that. So it's basically from people are ninety seven to one hundred. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, well, I guess a little younger maybe, but still in their nineties. Yeah, it's it's. I think I'm sure there there are people who are coming of age these days who kind of feel the effects of warfare. You know people who oh were gosh. you know served in Iraq and Iran and whatever, but not, not Iran, Iran, but Iran, not Iran, not, not yet, yet, right? Hopefully right? never. <laughs> I would say Iraq <laughs> and Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, and elsewhere, right? Well, but, Vietnam. You yeah. certainly have that. That's a pretty big contingent. That's my. That's uh, the baby boomers. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but for for those of us who were born, I was born in 1955, and it was um, a little bit after. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But you know, the the after effects of World War II was something that was all around us. Um, you know, my my uncle Arthur was a paraplegic from mm. World War II. Wow. Uh, and, you know, every time we had Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, if it was at our house as opposed to Uncle Arthur's house, mm -hmm. uh, we'd actually, even when we were little kids, we had to help because we didn't have ramps or anything sure. in those days. So we actually wow. had to lift him up into the house, uh, you know. So it's something everybody knew. Everybody knew people who had died. Right. Uh, and, yeah. that you know, was a big war. Yeah. So it was, um, but, it, you know, I. I it, you know, maybe in a way, maybe there are fewer wars and and fewer casualties, and you know, compared to the way it was. And I guess well, we should be glad for that. I think there's more. Well, casualty means they died, right? Uh, not always, but the thing is, usually we, we typically yeah, we think we have we more injured returning than ever. Right, but the, the total raw number of people is still doesn't compare to uh, you know a full blown shooting war with hundreds of thousands of people involved. I guess. Yeah. So uh, it's still horrible, um, but but anyway, I wanted to go. I went to the the Veterans Day uh, ceremonies at the Cambridge Cemetery this past fall, and mm -hmm. it was really moving. And I'm kind of feeling like I would like to go to these things um, yeah. as a regular regular matter. Yeah. Now uh, another matter, since there was no city council meeting, they, right. we just came from. Yes, the. Let's see, uh, what, what do we it call was, it? A, an it, art it, opening. Well, a pathway. Well, actually, it's funny because as we were yeah. waiting to come on the show, we were here. Jason Weeks on the in the show before us was actually yeah. making reference to a new art installation. They didn't have a they didn't cut a ribbon. There was no ribbon to cut. Oh, where's that one? The, uh, the, the one we just came from. Oh, Quake. right. Yeah. Quake. So it's along the the path, uh, which is sort of a bike pedestrian way. It starts that's, at. Um, Erie and goes to Pacific, but it's where Waverly kind of It's where the little, off and, it's funny, he, this is, he can tell us old times yeah, we say, yeah. you know, down where Cambridge Tire used to be. Well, I don't actually remember <laughs> that. It, it's right past uh, Fort Washington. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, where there's a little yeah. zigzag on the on the. Um, is it uh, an old road. railroad? Yes, track? there was there was a spur. Uh, I remember spur. going along the railroad right. spur. I probably have photos of it, actually. Mm. Um, it was the spur that actually went straight up to the back of the Neko building to deliver okay. the sugar. 
Oh wow! Yeah, and you know, and wherever else uh, was necessary for okay. uh, the, uh, the New England Confectioners Company, yeah. right, or Neco. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I was sort of almost feeling a little. Pr I mentioned this uh, when we were down there, feeling just a little almost pride of ownership in that. Oh. Back around 1999, I think I was on this Green Ribbon Open Space yeah. Committee, and uh, and we were floating ideas. And I, you know, when we talked about the, you know, the grand, what is now people are actually the grand junction. making making steps to have happen is the Grand Junction being turned into a, potentially into a full-fledged bicycle pedestrian corridor. So where is that exactly? Well, the Grand Junction is the tracks that go about down by MIT. Oh, okay. Um, but right. the thing is, is that that's a little tricky because the, um, the MBTA people uh, and mm -hmm. commuter rail people, they still have, uh, they hold out this hope that I seriously doubt will ever mm -hmm. happen of putting some kind of a, a, a rapid transit service oh. using that corridor again. That would be um, nice, actually. Railroad corridors don't grow on trees. You mean like light rail? Well, when quite. Tim Murray was still yeah. uh, the vice, uh, no, we call it lieutenant <laughs> governor, uh -huh. um, before he he took a walk. Yeah, um, right. He was he's from Worcester, and right. a lot of us were jokingly referring to his big idea as the Tim Murray Express, where. He had oh, this vision right. of extending yeah. commuter rail service from Worcester directly into North Station that would have been by great. making a link here. Well, the problem is there would be, I think, it is a total of seven grade crossings. Oh, great this problems. Grade crossings for railroads are problematic in relatively dense urban areas. Yes, I could see that. Uh, we'd have probably a death a month. <laughs> oh, gosh. If they, I think if they did that. <laughs> the only way you could do it is you'd have to bring the trains through very slowly. Mm. And if you want to do it in, in such a way as to actually have it be usable, <clears throat> you know, to actually bring any serious number of people in, you'd have to have them with some frequency, which mm. means you'd be blocking off Mass Ave, Broadway, no way that's gonna New Hampshire, yeah. uh, you know, every, all the streets that, that are currently cut off by, <clears throat> when a railroad train comes through. I mean, right now they typically, they don't move big long freight trains through no. there particularly often, but it's usually just a few cars here and there. I only see the circus trains, I don't know why. Well, they park them. in my neighborhood. They yeah. park them there. They park yeah. them on a railroad <laughs> siding there. Right. But this was, a, this was a spur off the Grand Junction Railroad that came up um, along, oh, what is it, Purrington Street, I think was the name of the street. So we're going back to what we did today. Yeah, the and uh, came up to the back of the Neco building. And I remember it was sort of a fascinating place to go, sort of wandering around. Mm -hmm. you know, I think there were probably a few bums living in there. Probably. Is that, is that uh, acceptable to use the word bum, or have I just insulted a class of people? Uh, I don't know. It sounds better than homeless, but. Yeah, well, know. yeah. So anyway, tr troubled folks. But the, uh, um, when, we were on, when I was on the Green Ribbon Open Space Committee, I said, you know, really, we should consider doing something with that. That's an available route and I think oh. it would be really a nice Do little you pedestrian. Think that they, somebody picked up on that? You know, that's the interesting thing. I, I, when there are plans and, and studies that get put together, mm -hmm. I was, I've been on some of them over the yeah. years, and they get, words get put on paper, and it sits in on a report, and sometimes those reports will just sit on a shelf and be forgotten. Mm -hmm. But very often, things that, that you're, you know, were said at a meeting, if, if it had any kind of legs at all, It'll appear. It, it carries on and one day actually happens. So, you know, I, I don't think, I can't believe we were the first ones to talk about the Grand Junction, but, you know, people certainly do point to the Green Ribbon Open Space Committee as sort of one of the steps sort of, you know, mm -hmm. supporting doing it. Yeah. But this particular spur, which is not the Grand Junction, it's, all, it's a spur off the Grand Junction. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think I might actually be the one who said we ought to turn that into a path. Mm. So it's kind of nice to be there today. When yeah, we were, there not, it is. It's we a were, path. We were kind of doing the, quote, ribbon cutting for the path. And, the, yeah. and it was also commemorating the installation of the art by DeWitt, DeWitt Godfrey. Is that his last name? This is okay. Godfrey, yeah. Called Quake. Called Quake. Uh, my understanding is a, the work, the artwork, which is very big steel yes. work, kind of like, almost tunnel-like in a way. We'll have photos on your website. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Took some. Uh, but that uh, that was supposed to be installed someplace in West Cambridge near the Cambridge Belmont line, but I don't know where, and it must have run into some difficulties about that. So they found a better yeah. place here. And it actually, fit, I think it fits pretty well. No, it's very in that nice. Location. It's uh, perfect. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's real kind of heavy <clears throat> steel and has kind of an industrial feel, and that was a pretty industrial area. Yeah, I like that. And it kind of works <clears throat> nice. And there were little baby bunnies running around. 
Yes, well, I see them a lot. <laughs> well, I've got them what's my... interesting about public art is that he said that he got the commission in 08. I think he said that. So, so it really does years? take a while yeah. to get things cited and get things done. And Yeah. Know. But anyway, uh, it's quite nice. So go and take your I, and bike I think or the, walk. The funding mechanism was to what they call the 1% for the arts program. So, so you, okay. you, you take like any big major public works project, including creating a path. Uh, you take 1% of whatever the total cost is, and then that has to be uh, set aside for some sort of public art. Okay. So a lot of the public art that's uh, scattered around Cambridge is was generated that through that. Um, I'll, I'll say here, sort of tangentially, but mm -hmm. um, when I was on this uh, Central Square Committee back in the 90s, which is different than the Central Square okay. Advisory Committee, but when we were <clears throat> narrowing the roadways and putting in extra trees and changing the lighting and doing some other things, um, there was a bit of a dilemma because you know, once upon a time, architects and designers, you know, who were uh, planning, you know, roadway changes and stuff that's sort of architectural and engineering type, they, a lot of the people who do that are also see themselves as artists. Yeah. And some of them actually do artwork yeah. on the side. Yeah. Yet, um, the way there was no, it's not, it was not permissible. And I don't think it's still permissible that the architect could then basically do the art as part of the 1% for the art. They have to bring hmm. in an outside artist ah. to do it. And honestly, if you've got an architect who, who's sort of laying out a kind of a cohesive design for an area or building, um, and then you have to bring in a completely different person who has to do well, the art. But maybe the idea and the execution is different too. No, and sometimes yeah. it works out great. Uh, and it's nice to have a little difference, yeah. right? But it's a it's a conflict. It's definitely a conflict. And back in the days when the architects just wanted to be the architects and the artists were the artists, you know. But they're no getting issue. paid as an architect, so it's not I like know, they're losing I out. Know, so but an it, artist but, then gets supported. But so. you might just say, well, the architect might want to have a lot of say in how the art. Maybe they did. Executed. We don't know. Well, in the Central Square case, they didn't. They did not. Well, okay. I don't think so. Well, yeah. again. Yeah. I'm sure each case I mean, is different. Actually, what happened, I think, is they put artistic elements into the design. Okay. I think they have these glass panels that are part of the bus stops and the corridor, which is now Graffiti Alley. Oh. Um, th those were kind of artistic elements that came from the architect. Okay. Whereas the art, the official <clears throat> art for the, that central square project, is what you see is sort of these rotating cylinders with various uh, poems and things Where that are right that? in the middle of Carl Baron Plaza. Most people, oh, a lot of people don't know you can spin yes. them. You can spin them, oh, okay. actually. They're like, almost right. like little prayer wheels. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, so, but that was a process uh, where hmm. we, had, we had to, I was part of that, we, you know, deciding who the public artist was. Yeah. I think if you want to find out where all the public art is, I think that is, uh, is they that the Cambridge Arts Council? Yeah. And um, I no, think it's... they even have a publication. So you should go explore it. There's a lot of it yeah. that you don't realize. Yeah. Or, you know? So in addition to that opening of this little bike uh, segment, it's not a super long one. It's just between no, very, Pacific and Erie. Beginning and the end, yeah. Right. But it connects to a quiet street, so it's actually a very nice connection because you go from right. uh, relatively uh, underutilized streets to the path to another relatively underutilized street, so you don't Sydney. have to ride on. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, not even on Sydney. You can just well, do the... Well, to the end uh, there. Yeah. You, well, you, all, at the very end, the very you have to end near Fort Washington. Yeah. yeah. So it's a nice alternative, you know. I mean, yeah. the roads are good, too, but it's a nice alternative. <laughs> coming up um, soon, actually, June 9th, hmm. uh, Thursday, June 9th at 4 p.m., if you want to see, an, if you want to attend another grand opening, I, I, there's, oh. there, and there are artistic elements here. Okay. I don't know if they're First, yeah. similarly because this is um, the part that was put together by the the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority. It's the first phase of grand opening of the Grand Junction Pathway, right? right. And now the P Grand Junction Pathway is not a reality yet, but there was a section of the corridor. Um, between Broadway and uh, Bristol, or that's okay. Binny, Broadway and Binny, so or Main Street. It actually goes here. from Main right. Street. So it says Gal. I can't even pronounce Galileo it. Galileo Galway. Yeah. Is that Galileo? Yeah. Was yeah. that his name? Yes. Yes. Did he had the same last name. Well, as it's Galileo first? Galilei. I know, but jeez. I know. Oh. I know. But hey, 
I think Man's I've been on it, but thing. I can't tell you where it is. Well, you haven't been on this one here because it's been gated off. They just built okay, it fresh. Okay, but I've been in that area. Yeah. I've seen that name. There's where Benny Street kind of bends around. Um, okay. Sort of the top section. Yeah. Um, that runs parallel to the railroad tracks is now a paved bicycle pedestrian corridor uh, oh. right in between the right. Benny Street and the railroad tracks. Um, so if I, you're going down Broadway, it's to your left? Uh, if you would go down Broadway, <coughs> and when you get down to there, it's, uh, see, because I don't usually go that way. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, well, um, Broadway, I mean, the actually go to the right. Labs is on the right. Yeah, when you get down Broadway, I think so it's, it's actually, it's will right. be, uh, it'll actually be on both ways. Okay. When you get down to Broadway. Uh, I'm not sure if the other section has been constructed yet. But the one that's right over by the McGovern Brain Research Center building, there's that's so not many, you, Mark. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? There's so many buildings. There's there like is. the road. There's the, uh, yeah. the, there's so many. But it's, these are, there's the part where the MIT-owned portion of the corridor uh, stops and where it becomes the property of the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority Okay. before going over into other ownership. I mean, the, the rail corridor itself is <clears throat> is owned by the railroads, but the thing is is that the, some of the right-of-way uh, yeah. immediately around there where you're going to put the bike path is not all, you know, all owned yet. Actually, the city just put in its... Uh, um, had a loan authorization for, I think, 10 million bucks uh, to have a money in a kitty so that if an opportunity arises to purchase <coughs> a, uh, a sliver of land down like by Metropolitan yeah. Pipe over East Cambridge or... I know where that is. Yeah, okay. whatever it takes to kind of widen the corridor just enough I to see. accommodate the future path. All right. So that'll be phase So maybe two. next week you can have a map of this on your website. Yeah, we, we should sort of show some of that. It will be on couple days after our show. Yeah, I think it would be something people yeah. should be aware of. I, I was I was actually driving. Hmm. Oh, That's evil, rare evil me. Drive. Yeah. yeah, well, I was going down there, I forget what. Um, they'd be going down to where I work uh, on a weekend or something. And no, it wasn't a weekend. Maybe it was last Friday. And I saw, you know, when I went down there, there, there were the people from the, the executive director of the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority oh. and several people from the city were all down there. I guess they were oh. kind of scouting it out, making sure everything oh, to kind have of this, checked uh, out. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's Thursday, June 9th, 4 o'clock. Uh, right. And it'll be good. I'm sure all, a lot of the bicycle advocates will be down there because right. it's this is sort of a big one for this really helps cycling advocates. This really cyclists, right? It, 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 Right now, it doesn't. Honestly, it's just no. a little. Sh it's a little segment, and okay. it's not real. It's a nice little segment. Uh, it's a lot better than walking along the railroad tracks, which I've done. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it, it's just a short segment. Um, okay. It only really come into its own when the section well when the uh, section emanating out in both other directions happens. And that's dependent on well what? on a lot of things. There's a lot Money. of moving parts. Money, right of way, plans for the railroads, whether uh, something else is actually going to happen or not. Uh, <coughs> MIT has did a study, and I think they've been pretty cooperative about permitting. Uh, uh, actually, the buildings that they've built in, they've actually built in such a way they allow for a future path to go through. Oh, so they, they have not encroached on that corridor at all. Um, so eventually there'll be the connection over at Main Street. Mm -hmm. When you jump Main Street, yeah. you'll you'll go under the little tunnel under under building, and go all the way to Mass Ave and all under the way over. Little the, tunnel. Well, the McGovern Brain Research Building actually extends over the railroad tracks. Oh. It was built over the tracks. I I gotta get down there because I'm not. Oh, yeah. I remember I, I bike through that every day. Actually. All right. Yeah. When you say tunnel, that's my shortcut. do you mean like it's a, a building. walkway that's crossed? Well, the building just built, it's built over and it's just got a big boxy square tunnel. Oh, okay. Right there. All right. But um, so the thing is, is that the, the, I, ultimately, the, other than the fact that MIT really does have some service needs, the service yeah. and buildings, and, right. and the, the, the right of way next to the tracks has been a very handy little service road. Yeah. Um, so they'd have to kind of work something out so they're not running trucks over when the bicyclists are right. in there or whatnot. But I think there's enough corridor in there to do it. Um, well. The hard part will be the other way, actually, uh, which is when you get over from the around Binney Street area and you continue uh, northward up toward Cambridge Street. 
Yeah. It's a narrower path oh. and it's tougher to yes. squeeze in yeah. a future railroad use should yeah. that be continued yeah. Yeah. as well as a path. I think it can be done, but it'd be a lot easier to do it if they mm -hmm. could get a little more right away. And then the hard part then is how do you get from there to connect it to the so-called community path that I guess imagine at some community point will path? be built. That's in Somerville. Oh, but that's okay. been dependent, and actually much of the community, the original plan for the community path has been rap radically changed because of this shortfall for the Green Line extension. I was going to say, it's all connected. It yeah. is. Um, so you have to get yeah. over the tracks over right. there, and how that's to be done is completely unsettled. Yeah. That's, so, but the thing is, is dependent on something else. So you build seg a segment at a time, and if you yeah. have to wait five, ten years for the, for the whole thing. As long as it's a bridge that goes nowhere. You know, right. They, yeah. I've heard of those. I even right. had but, one in my hometown. But if you don't build these segments when you have an opportunity <laughs> yeah. to do so, then nothing will ever get ha True. happen. It'll just all be forgotten. True. So, right. I, you know, it's still it's the right thing to do. So anyway, that's coming up. Um, we'll mention it again next week, and we'll show you. We'll uh, try and show you some map of where it is. Yeah. Uh, we should probably do it, even though Jason was right on before us yeah. from the Cambridge Arts Council. Uh, yeah. I thought maybe we should, we, we'll also do a little bit of a pitch yeah, for Cambridge sure. Arts Council. Yeah, so actually, this is already, um, yeah, why don't you actually go we'll do, do the, the, the so yeah, yeah, and we'll, because okay. I've got, I've, I got a couple of other <coughs> little featured items in there to do that. So this Saturday, uh, June 2nd, starting at 11. No, yeah, June 4th. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I made this the second time today I've made that mistake. So June 4th, on a Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. is the annual Cambridge River Festival. Okay, and you we, can show that poster if you Yeah, want. we could do that right in here. So you, if, you, if you're a shut-in and been watching CCTV for the last hour, this is not the first time you've seen this. <laughs> Right, <laughs> but it's, uh, not, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, so this is just an image I, I snagged from the front page of the brochure for the River Festival. Um, uh, it starts at 11 a.m. with the um, the sculpture sort of the, the sculpture race, yeah, mm -hmm. which I remember from way back when, where people yeah. just sort of make these sort of really crazy yeah. things. Now, one thing for those who've been to the River Fest in the past. It's not on the river. Right. Well, it's on a different part of the river. Well, for the longest time, it was over in the sort of yeah. River Bend Park part of the river. Yes. Um, partly on the grassy part, partly in the roadway, partly on the side streets, um, but basically <laughs> up a little close to Harvard. Uh, because of construction and whatnot, it actually was in Central Square for a couple of years. Right. Uh, but this year, it's not going to be in either of those places. <laughs> it's actually going to be down along Cambridge Parkway and the Leachmere Canal. So really along the waterfront. Yeah, like in front of the Hotel Sinesta, basically that area. In, so, oh, okay, so they're taking over that sort of side. There's like a okay. side road that sure. parallels um, Edmund Land Boulevard. So they're closing that, and then all yep. the uh, vendors will be along they'll, there? There'll be vendors and such along there. They'll, there's actually, I think, a total of six stages. But where will those be? Um, it's not that long a piece there. Well, I mean, do we, you know, we have to pull out the whole the whole brochure for that. And we don't have that. Uh, well, uh, maybe I have a, a way of get accessing it here, right. but um, you know, again, just a few a few bits and pieces about it. The River yeah. Fest has been around originally. Um, Why don't you go back to us and I'll see. If <laughs> okay, okay, we'll do that here. Um, <laughs> you know, I was actually trying to figure out because they say this is the 37th Cambridge River Festival, mm. but there were a, a year, a one or two years where it didn't take place. I think one year might have we may have actually been partly f reason for that because. We did a big Earth Day event, and I can't remember for sure, but we ended up like using so many of the same people and, and stole their thunder, yeah. and they might actually not have had it, or else they delayed it to the fall as a result of that. This is a very I'm not sure. you could show. This is, well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, actually, ha it doesn't have the year. We might even come to do this on the second one here. I know, I'll tell you about this one here. Yeah. So, so That's we just showed you the, la the last one. This was, I just happened to have this from a friend who was very, very, very yeah, involved yeah. in staging the River Festival in those days. So this is from 1988. Oh, so it's 88. I was going to say 1988. Oh, yeah. I, I so this is Courtney that. Skinner was the wow. artist. And what I'm actually showing here is actually just the front cover. The actual brochure is a, is a much more elaborate piece. Huh. Um, I actually have it here, but I don't think wow. you really need to see me uh, oh, sort of dis display it here. Yeah. Actually, let, let me actually do Go it back. here. Yeah. We'll come right. back and we do here. But <clears throat> what you saw was the front cover of this little brochure here. Yeah. But 
you know, just, I mean, there were some amazingly creative people involved in the Let's Riverfest over the years. So, <gasps> so, oh, you know, they're, they're, wow. again, nobody's going to be able to see this here, but the thing is, this Look is... Look at that. Oh, and they have the dates, June 5th to 11th, which is almost the exact same Yeah, year. in 1988, yeah. Oh, but why does it say to the 11th? I don't know. I was a little surprised about that myself. So, I think that activities went on longer than a day. That's very that, possible, I actually yeah. remember that now. Yeah. I mean, it's evolved very much over the Not years. Not all on the river, but there were definitely things that happened. Happened, I believe. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Actually, to be perfectly honest, since I was looking for some stuff so we could bring on the show today, like a little yeah. show and tell, I found I was digging around and I found all sorts of stuff. I'll, I'll show, I'll do a little more show and tell during the all second right. half hour. Uh, this is a, this is one. This is a complete non sequitur. Whoop, and there goes half of it right now. Okay. It's a good thing our half hour is coming yeah. in so I can go pick it sure. up. Sure. Yeah. Okay, here, I'm going to just show you this one here. All right. Just to, my, my house is a museum when people come to see it. Yes, him. I know. This yeah. here is a this yeah. here is a copy, original copy of from 1846 of the wow. Act to establish the city of Cambridge. Where did you get that? I got it on eBay <gasps> of all things. 18, 18, you might be the only one to have that in oh, Cambridge. I, I don't think right? so. You but don't uh, think so? You think they have it at Cambridge Historical? Yeah, it was just sitting on the shelf in my house somewhere. I see. So. Anyway, we're, we're right. pretty much kind yeah, of winding down our, our first okay. half hour, and we'll try and be a little more organized uh, when well, we come back. Well, we're always organized. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to sweep up a little bit here I'll as well. So. Clear my throat. Anyway, yeah. a lot more to say uh, when we return. Yeah. See you next uh, time. Right? Hey, no, we got 10 whole seconds to go. Oh! Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. All right, no, maybe Five, not. Five, four, three. Three, two, one. All right, three, see you in a few minutes. Bye. Bye.